silence. Our next speaker is Grace. Um, I wish I could show her full photo in all of its glory, but you could probably find that on our website. Uh, she is a Kung Fu master, wushu artist, ninja, fighter, slash designer, working with a lot of big labels. <laughs> Hiding in the corner. Um, trifecta martial arts. Yeah, I think I'll just let her take the stage and then we can reflect on what happens afterwards. Yes. Please welcome, yeah. sorry. Yes. <laughs> Grace Wang is also a very creative person, so I need notes to keep me on track, <laughs> otherwise I'd be talking the entire night. I'm also the oldest young person you'll ever meet, therefore I also need notes. Alright, so as you all know, um, I'm one of the founders of Trifecta Martial Arts. So we don't have much time, okay? So I'm just gonna skim through some of my greatest hits, okay? Um, so, uh, right now? Okay. So, at my last talk, I was on the panel with Mr. Dennis Go, who was, uh, who is the founder of Hungry Go Where, and he was like, you know, oh my God, I used to tell people that like, when you feel awful about yourself or your day, come and talk to me. I will make you feel better. But after hearing you talk, you made me feel better. So trust me, I've got very interesting things for you tonight. Okay, so just very quickly, I was classically trained in web and graphic design. And it was just one of those things that, you know, I just happened to be good at. The golden path was laid out in front of me. I graduated from design school, went to, went to uni in Melbourne, got accepted into a prestigious advertising job in Europe. And um, it looked like my future was all set. Student of the year, okay? And um, I was on the path to my dream. But a few steps into that path, I got to Europe and I realized I didn't quite love design as much as I had hoped. Shit, now what? I am here. Why is this happening to me? I had it all planned out and it seemed like that plan wasn't for me. F this, I'm leaving. So I came home right after my contract, bummed around for a bit and then decided, oh yeah, okay, I'm gonna start a design company with my friends. <laughs> okay, the person who hated design is going to start a design company. How do you think that went? I hated my life. Every single day, I hated my clients. I couldn't even love my paycheck because I did not have a paycheck. <laughs> the landlord wanted half an eye and my kidney for rent, and the clients didn't pay. So what did I say? F this, I am leaving. So in my 23-year-old mind, I thought, okay, so I don't love design. What next? What do I love? Okay, hang on. I love to sing. I think that could work. So, I did. And what is so bad about moving to Hong Kong, doing a Mariah Carey, dating someone more than twice my age to get a recording contract? If Mariah could do it, honey, I could do it. <laughs> okay? So it was all done out of love, so they say. Um, the person would have nothing to gain, but then I realized that she had sold me to someone else and they were threatening a lawsuit to make me sign the contract. So I said, F this, I'm leaving. <laughs> so my money was drying up and I had figured, you know what, I was trying to do the things that I thought that I loved, so now I'm going to wise up. I am going to chase the money. <laughs> this time, I started a company and we ran seminars on how to make money on eBay. You can, by the way. And that company actually made money. Okay? And because we traveled so much, we decided that the smartest thing to do was not to leave two apartments empty half the time. We would rent one apartment and leave it empty half the time. Pets hit. I'm such a genius. So little did I know that before starting the company, my business partner had scammed people of money. And he must have received some threatening messages that you know something big was happening, so he ran off to China for a factory visit. And I was left in that house, 
and people were coming to our door demanding for money. So I was dragged into it. People were accusing me of scamming them too. It was so bad, I actually feared for my safety. So what did I say? Exactly. So, okay, let's, let's take a short breather here and uh, talk about my relationships. Okay? You'd think that if so many things in my life had gone wrong, at least one thing will go right. So, from the beginning of my story to this point, uh, my first love had cheated on me, dumped me. Uh, I had a whole string of relationships shorter than my hair. I dated someone else who had flung a bedside table at me and then left me because she wanted to join the circus. True story, people still do want to run away and join the circus. <laughs> <laughs> then I met someone else, someone special. So special, it was like my escape route um, elsewhere, right? My whole life had just exploded in front of my face. She lived in Melbourne, so I packed up, moved back to Melbourne. That went on for a little bit, cheated on me twice, two different people. And I came home to a note on the dining table which basically just read, F this, I'm leaving you. Okay. So there I was, with nothing to my name. My name dragged in mud, and up to this point, everything that I touched turned to shit. So I stayed in Melbourne, I barricaded myself at home, cried for three days, went out, got a puppy. Because I felt like if I didn't, I would run, like I always have. And for some reason, I felt compelled not to run this time. Long walks with my new needy puppy forced me to think about the events that have culminated to this point, and I realized that life, my life, was a series of patterns. Something in my head clicked, and I realized that I lived my life with a really, really bad four-letter word hanging over my head. Fear. That at every chance I got, I left. I ran. Fear this, I am leaving. I bet you all thought it was something else. <laughs> so, the thing I feared the most was standing still. Because when I stood still, I believed in my head that if I stood still, my life would stand still and I would go nowhere in my life. And if I stood still, I had to face myself in the mirror every day and I would be forced to be honest about myself, my life, my relationships, my failures. So with this knowledge, I had a choice. Do I want to continue doing the same thing? But life has proven to me that if you do the same thing, you will always produce the same result. And you know what? Fuck it. I chose to face my life, my fears, and I chose to stand still. To be honest with myself about my life and my choices, and that was the best decision I have ever made in my life. Since then, I found martial arts, founded Trifactor Arts, uh, Trifactor Martial Arts with my best friend and business partner, Aline. I found a life partner who supports the insanity of entrepreneurial life. And I am in the best place I've ever been in my life. Trifecta is the strongest reflection of who I am as a person because it was founded upon the belief that martial arts, like life, is a journey. And like all journeys, it is about self-discovery. Sure, you don't always make the right turns, but that's okay. Your journey might be different from somebody else's, and that's okay too. It might be longer or shorter, and that's fine. And if you realize you're on the wrong path, take some time. Stand still. Retrace your steps. And if you know you've always been turning left at that junction, turn right. You know, just try it. My point is don't fear it. Just fuck it. <laughs> okay? Take a chance on life on you. 
even if it takes more than one chance. Sorry, uh, yeah, does anyone have any questions for me? <laughs> Can we keep your puppy? <laughs> uh, puppy's growing a lot bigger and fatter and older now. We are we good with that? <laughs> All right. <laughs> how? Sure. No, no, no. How do you um? How do you merge the two things of um? Moving ahead, trying something new, not being scared of something new while it's not running. Because if the pattern is running, but then how do you differentiate? I'm running away from, or I'm running towards something that I want. Um. Every time I'm scared, I think back to the time when I went wakeboarding. And I was trying a trick, right? And I was coming in, and every time I get that jump, BAM! I would let go of the handle. And I would land, and I would land it. And I don't know if you've lived in Singapore long Six enough years. to know the term alien. Alien, no? Yeah, okay. <laughs> so it's a really brass lady. And the lady who was my instructor, my wakeboarding instructor, who drove the boat, she is that alien, the breast lady. Stopped the boat with a cigarette in her mouth. Grace up. Okay? Grace up. <laughs> Don't always throw the handle. You can do it. You see, many times you landed, right? How many times you go round, 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 round? Because you always throw the handle. Don't care. Hoi <laughs> siya. <laughs> and that actually means, fuck it, just go. We're renaming fuck up now. <laughs> and every single time I'm actually scared of doing something, I realize, uh, I think back to that time, and I know I can do it. It's just whether or not I can believe in it. I hope that answers no, it, it, your question. It, it totally says it. Where is the martial arts coming from? Did I miss that in the storyline? or? Well, um, martial arts came when the bedside table came hurtling at me and then spent the whole night crying and felt, oh my god, I didn't know how to defend myself. Then I went to learn martial arts and along the way picked up another martial art as well. Yeah. <laughs> yes? Quick question. Um, what's the trifecta as they go? Who should we uh, Trifectors got Taekwondo, Muay Thai, and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And you know how to do all of them? Uh, Muay Thai and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I don't do Taekwondo. Are you still doing design? Yeah, I'm still doing design on and off, mostly for Trifecta. <laughs> do you enjoy that now? Sorry? Do you enjoy design now? No, I still hate it. <laughs> <laughs> Every time Arlene asks me, oh Grace, can we have a new t-shirt? No! <laughs> can, you, can you create a flyer? No! <laughs> so why do you hate design? Why do you hate design? Um, I, I think it was something that came naturally to me, but sometimes you don't appreciate the things that come naturally to you. <laughs> What's the name of the puppy? Bruno. <laughs> Bruno. He doesn't look like a Bruno, but he's a Bruno. Before walking away from all of your problems, did you try to fix anything or you just walk away? No, that was my MO. Any sign of trouble, I would turn and run because I was too scared to face it. Many times. What do you do? How do you sleep at night? <laughs> I, I realized that I like this version of myself best. Oh my god, the most beautiful sentence ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, every time I ran away, I would create a new version of myself, create a new version of my life. And this is the version I like the best.
and everything up to this point created this version of me. So I'm happy with that. Where's your adrenaline coming now from? If you're not going somewhere else and restarting all the time, where's your adrenaline coming from? Um, my business keeps me busy. Okay. And my adrenaline comes from watching my students grow every day, okay. um, changing lives one at a time. I had a I had a teenage boy come in for his first class, and he was this scraggly little boy. Then was oh my god, so uncoordinated. I was I, I <laughs> after I gave him his first class, I remember telling Aline, oh my god, I don't want to do that again. <laughs> and and now he's blossomed into this young man who you know competes in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And for the first what three months, I didn't know how he sounded like because he was just like, hi Nathaniel. <laughs> How are you, Nathaniel? Do you understand, Nathaniel? <laughs> and he was so shy, so painfully shy. And now he's got friends at the gym. He's blossomed. You know, he, he's got so much self-confidence, has conversations with you. And, and I'm proud that something I did helped this. Thank you, okay. everybody. Good night.